G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, let's do an update on the white spot situation. Oh, life's really just been handing me battle after battle lately. Um, I've never had sickness on this magnitude before and because how lucky, uh, A, how lucky I've been and B, because my tanks are species only, everything's practically quarantined. Well, that is quarantining really because you're not introducing different species. Um, through all my safe, call them safety measures, I've never, I haven't really experienced sickness much. So I have had white spot before, but uh, is in an isolated tank this time. I guess it's still isolated, but it's on a way larger scale. Um, we've got about 15 flower horns that have it, which you do the math, that's a lot of money. Um, I'll be back in a sec guys. Alright guys, so I don't really remember what I was saying just before. Sorry, I got a phone call. Um, so, I've lost a couple of fish. Um, I lost the adult peacock bass. Um, I lost my... Uh, barramundi. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm more sad about the barramundi even though it's like a $10 fish. Um, one of my rays is a bit burnt around the edges. I'm not sure if that's from the medication, but I don't think it is. I think it's from ammonia. Um, I ran it at a average, I didn't run it at a heavy dose rate before. Um, my giant grammy seems alright. He's probably the fish that I'm most stressed about. And my little ray pup, I really want to pull the ray pup out and put it in a tank, but I don't want to contaminate another tank with white spot. So a bit of a rock in a hard place. Um, but we just got to think positive. Um, I want to tell you guys my game plan from here on in. So if you look down, you can see there's a definite ammonia cloud. Um, I'm getting a test kit off Ryan from Green Pet Central. <clears throat> I don't know whether it'll either be a flu valve kit, which I've never tried before, or I might even just get an a a API kit as a temporary kit for now. Um, there's not a huge, uh, there's not really much point testing. I know just from looking at the tank that the ammonia is through the roof. Um, I'm currently doing a thousand litre water change and then I'm going to do another dose of the white spot treatment. Um, but I want to explain something. So, sorry, this is just a talking video, guys. But so the white spot treatment is crashing my filter, which means I already was suspicious that my filter had no good bacteria in it because of what happened last week with the basket in the inlet. Um, now we've put um, Michelin, Michelin green or something, whatever it's called, through the filter. What, that's completely wiped out the filtration. <clears throat> and then on top of that, well not on top of that, but, and then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six adult stingrays in there and a few fish. Not, the fish are thinning out pretty quick. Um, main thing is I'm oh, I've am i lost a few of the Africans and stuff in the baskets and a couple of the flower horns in the baskets. I've yet to lose any of the flower horns in the three foot which is good news but there's definitely one or two which I'm 90% sure I'm going to lose. Um, so when all your bacteria is dead in your filter Water changes is one of the last things you should be doing. So, I've thrown, I've thrown Seachem safe in at a really st strong dosage to detoxify the ammonia. Every day I'm doing that. So, I'm doing a thousand litre water change on the pond right now. Basically, that is so I can put more meds in. Once, once the um, once my med cycle's finished, 
Um, I want to do zero water changes on this tank. Uh, this is my plan of attack. So zero water changes and then we're going to pick out tanks that I'm 100% or 99% confident that there is no disease in the tanks. I'm going to choose my oldest colonies and I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the hold the fil sponge filters over this tank right near the inlet or I might even take them outside to the filter and squeeze them into the filter. <clears throat> I'm not going to let the sponges touch the water. I'm going to have clean hands when I do it and the sponges go straight back to the original tank they came from. But what this is doing is putting the bacteria off the sponges into the tank. Now I want to be pretty rough with the sponges, like really squeeze them out, break some bacteria off and get it back in there. And then you want to do no water changes. Um, I can't stress that enough. It's some really bad advice I see on Facebook. If, so then the tank's cycling right and you start doing water changes. Those water changes are pro prolonging the cycle. So what might be like, once I've squeezed the sponges in, it's probably going to be like a seven day process getting a cycle going again. It will be a lot faster than a, than a fishless cycle. Um, so if I start doing water changes every day to drop that ammonia, that seven days is then going to turn into 14 days or 30 days or so because every time you're putting fresh water in it's killing off the new bacteria that is trying to develop so basically um i've i've told this theory to a lot of people um i've, I've used it before and basically i'm going to use it here and i'm going to show you guys um and I know there will be a lot of people that will watch this video and they won't believe this theory. Um, and I get people com like reply to my comments when I say it on Facebook or whatever, I don't do water changes. People think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, it's the right thing to do. So, oh, and the other thing mixed in all that, I'm going to clean the filter outside. The filter's crashed, so there's no harm in giving it a good clean out. Um, what else? So, there's not much else. I'm going to throw another dose of meds in. I've already thrown another dose of meds in the three foot. It just sucks. There's, I, I'd only just pulled, I pulled all the girls out of this tank and there's actually 12 males in there. And if you've seen how much I sell these boys for, you do the math. Um, I'm pretty much going to not feed the whole fish room at this stage. Uh, I'll probably still feed my grow out males because at the end of the day, I need to pump some males to get a breeding group going. But as for everyone else, I just want to drop the bio load on the room for a little, for a week or so. Um, all the fish can go without food. There's some African fry which might not do too well without food, but like these little guys here. So I might give them a light feed, but at this stage, the best thing to do when you've got problems is stop feeding. Fish can go 30 to 60 days without food. <clears throat> so, uh, this is proper breaking me, but I'm hoping that I can help you guys deal with the same situation if it comes through. For you guys to watch the channel every day, I'm pretty sure you can gather how rough the last six weeks of my life has been. Um, but I've got my house, I've got my fish room, and I've got my missus, guys. She's, a, she's amazing. Um, and through all these battles we've had, our relationship's stronger than ever. So, I don't mean to get all mushy on you, but honestly, that is the best part of my life. And she's what gets me through all this shit, really. Um, sorry about the late upload yesterday, too. Um, my work's been hectic.
hopefully it's only one or two more days I'll be back to normal um, I like where I work but I'd really like to just get a 38 hour job so I could concentrate on the fish room more but I don't want to leave where I am because I, I do like my place of employment <clears throat> but anyway guys I think that's about it if you like this video give it a thumbs up thumbs ups help even if it's a sad video if you want to subscribe for more and find out the rest of this story hit the little red button and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.